What's good, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. As usual, this is our very special annual edition we like to call the NFL Spectacular. Woo-hoo! I'm Rick, joined as always by Ryan Big Show Pulley. Word oh, up, homie. What's good? Did you have a good Labor Day? I, excuse me, I actually had a wonderful holiday weekend i was able to uh meet up with my biological family uh met my biological father in person for the first time in my adult life and met his wife and my three sisters so it was a wonderful blessing got to spend most of the day saturday with them uh went to uh, well i also met my nephew for the first time as well went to a baseball game that he was playing uh, had some dinner had some lovely conversation and then uh, just chilled with the family the rest of the weekend. So, yeah, it was pretty good. Nice. Very nice. So, <clears throat> real quick plug before we get to this show. want to plug uh, Rewind, Relive, and Review, my other YouTube channel, because uh, me and the missus spent a lot of time watching TV and movies over the weekend. And uh, I put out a, uh, uh, a new episode this morning that uh, everybody seems to like. It's the new Godzilla trailer. I actually uh, watched that episode. So, yes. Appreciate it, sir. Um, I, I, it took me by surprise because, you know, I'm chilling yesterday morning. I'm like, I'm going to put out this episode. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to do whatever. And then I'm messing around on YouTube and I see the trailer. And I'm like, oh, here we go. I'm going to record this and I'm going to put this out. And it did not disappoint. I know, I mean, the the trailer was fantastic, except Mm -hmm. it was all in Japanese. And I know it said that it'll be out in America in December, December but I don't think it's going to be theater-wise. I don't think it's going to come out in the States. No, No, it's not going to be a nationwide uh, release. Because I know in America, the next Godzilla is with king kong and a super villain a super monster or super whatever they call them so yeah but that trailer was pretty dope i, I liked it it uh it, it pulled on the heartstrings of my childhood it did the godzilla look re- almost reminded me of our our childhood godzilla the man in the suit <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, and also while we're doing just simple shout outs too, and I know we don't normally touch bases on it, but man, congratulations to Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, Sunday yes. right, that was one heck of a game. I tell you, I am a diehard Kansas Jayhawk fan, basketball and football, but I will be a closet Colorado Buffalo fan this year. I will be rooting for them. Yes, and hopefully they'll be able to keep it going because, you know, this was a nice little win for them, but it doesn't huge mean anything win. if they drop the next one. Yeah, it's a huge win. I mean, to beat the runner-up from the national championship game. I was getting ready to say, year, wasn't TCU in the national championship game? I mean, yeah, I mean, they got they got pounced by Georgia, but, uh, you know, to, to beat them in their house, and then I've seen today that that one win – Colorado's now ranked number 22 in the country. So that was huge. Wow. That was huge. So, but you're right. They're playing Nebraska at home. It's the home opener for Colorado. If they were to lose this game, it makes the game of this past week versus TCU pretty much pointless. Pretty much. But I don't I don't see them losing. They're, you know, they they might. I think they're gonna have a pretty good season. They're gonna win eight to nine games this year. Well, he's already won as many games as they did last year. This is correct. So he's got nowhere to go but up. This is correct. If he only wins one more game, Coach Prime has doubled the amount of wins as the last coach. Yeah. He'll win. I, I guarantee you, and I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee you that that team is so good that he will win the minimum amount, which is six games, I believe, to become bowl eligible. He will win that amount for sure. But I am thinking – closer to nine wins Mm -hmm. and the games that i'm questioning that he that are possible losses are usc oregon and utah everything else that's on his plate 
is it, are very winnable games. I was questioning USC and Oregon as well, but I was also questioning Arizona. Arizona's trash, man. They're coming to the Big Twelve. They're 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 trash. No, well, Colorado okay. is too, but yeah, they're they're not they're not going to. They're different creatures in those Colorado uniforms. Like I don't know. There's a on Amazon Prime. There's a there's a uh, four or five series episode that came out last year, and it's called Coach Prime. And it's about his last year at Jackson State. So, like, I knew about his son Shadur. I knew about uh, the Travis Hunter. I knew about them by watching that show. So, seeing how well they played did not surprise me. But damn, I mean, those guys are are dogs. Like, yeah, and you mentioned Tra- shout out to Dion. Shout out to Shadur too. I mean, he's the first Colorado quarterback to have five hundred yards. Yeah, ever. Yeah, he's the first. He broke that record. And he actually it broke the record for the most yards ever and definitely set the record for most yards by a first time starting uh, quarterback for that college. Um, But yeah, uh, and his other son, I think I forget. I think it's I want to say Shiloh, I think is his name, uh, plays cornerback and he also wears number 21, Uh, you know, had 10 tackles and, and played a pretty decent game. So. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I'm going to be a closet Colorado fan. I'm going to be rooting for him from the sidelines. Um, and then, you know, I'll get to see a lot more of them because, like I said, next year they're coming back to the Big 12. So, mm. And they should dom- They should dominate once Let's they're in the Big so. 12. That would be nice. All right, all you people, we are talking okay. NFL today. I got three segments, and I'm going to start this one off uh, with uh, – the segment, uh, really? Oh, huh? trying to see what happened in my notes there. There we go. Yeah, had technical difficulties, everybody. Um, I want to go over some stuff here, and uh, first things first. 10 stadiums, the 10 best stadiums that uh, I I don't know how this came about, but these are what fans voted as the 10 best stadiums in the National Football League. And I I wasn't asked to vote. How do they get these people to vote? You know, um, I'm not mad and you'll find out why as soon as I pull it up. I do have a question because you are place. a Chiefs fan, and I feel like you got robbed. And here we go. NFL fans voted for the 10 best stadiums, and the results are downright shocking. Yes, they are. Okay, I'm just going to go through these guys with you. And you tell me if you feel that they are where they are supposed to be. Okay. Okay. Number one, the Seattle Seahawks. Bro. Now, I know back in the day, Legion of Boom and all that, Seattle was uh, supposed to be that team. But... um, Are they saying the loudest stadiums or just the best for a fan? This is the best outright. Not just the loudest. I mean, I don't, I've never been to Seattle, so I don't know what all they have to offer. But I thought the number two should be the number one. Okay. Number two would be Arrowhead Stadium. Now, I am a um, Raider fan. I'm not exactly a big fan of the Chiefs but I am also a realist. And when it comes to um, the Chiefs Stadium, I've been to several games. I've seen it all. I've done it all there. Um, It's where it's at. I'm not even going to lie. There's no sugarcoating it. The the Chiefs, they lay it out. Tailgating uh, inside the stadium during the game. 
Um, it does get loud in there. They support their team 100% no matter what. I'm not just talking about these last seven to 10 years. I'm talking about, you know, since the 70s and 80s, they've been about it no matter what kind of year that the team was having. To me, that is the mark of a good uh, stadium, a good atmosphere. That's the reason why I felt they should actually been number one over the Seahawks. Okay. And your thoughts so far on that? Uh, I don't know. I, without hearing the whole list or seeing the okay. whole list. Well, let me go ahead and just quickly run through the rest. Three, M&T Bank Stadium, which is the Baltimore Ravens. Four, Allegiant Stadium, the Raiders. Uh, Raymond James is number five. That's Tampa Bay. And uh, Pittsburgh Stadium. Then Lucas Oil for the Indianapolis Colts. Then uh, U.S. Bank, which is the Minnesota Vikings Stadium. And wrapping it up is Lambeau Field from the Green Bay Packers and SoFi, which is the Rams and the Chargers. And that one's kind of skewed there, number 10, because it's more or less the Rams. It ain't the Chargers. All right, so I want to make sure that I got this right here because I think I finally popped it up with you. Okay. Okay, yeah, okay. I got the same list you got now. Yeah. Um. It. I mean, I guess it depends on – I would need to know what their criteria is for base – because Arrowhead is an older stadium. I mean, it was it was built in the seventies. Um, so a lot of these other stadiums have been built in the last you know twenty years. Uh, so they're going to have more bells and whistles than Arrowhead does. Yeah. See, all they have here so far is the experience. So I'm taking that in as the overall game day experience. I mean, just by reading what they're saying here is the accessibility of Lumen's field. That's why they're number one. All their, their bountiful selections of local craft bills, Starbucks and other coffees, fine Pacific Northwest food, the staggering views of downtown Seattle. You know, Arrowhead has... Arrowhead is more like a college feel to it when you mm -hmm. go to there. Um, or let me, let me take that back. It used to feel that way in the nineties. I know I went to a game last year and it's more bougie now because, you know, the chiefs are winning. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a different atmosphere than what it was when, even when I grew up, you know, going to the games weekly. Yeah. Um, I, I have no problem with with us being number two. I don't. Uh, I I don't know even know why Baltimore's on the list. I could see I could see Oakland being on. Or sorry, Las Vegas being on there. Well, um, you know what? If this list had came out last year, I couldn't see Oakland. Excuse me, Las Vegas. See now you got me doing it. Las Vegas uh, being on the list, but after going to that stadium visiting down there seeing the amenities and everything that, that stadium has to offer yeah it's it's on there i mean i just it's just vegas so being in that area i can see but they it have a little... club in the south end zone they've got exactly two other clubs uh on on you know each side of the stadium a bar like i said it's that they got vegas on off yeah it's vegas um i don't know why Tampa's stadium is there. Uh, I can see Pittsburgh being there because that's an iconic stadium. You know, it's an iconic team. Yeah. Um, I I would actually have to experience Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. It don't look nothing special to me. I can see Lambeau Field. That's tradition. The Minnesota Vikings, their stadium is pretty pretty eccentric looking so yeah i could see that might be worth going obviously i'm with you and then sofi stadium that just that thing is a piece of beauty i'm surprised that dallas cowboys aren't on there 
That's what I was getting ready to say. Closing it out, I was getting ready to say, I'm surprised, but uh, think about it like this. How many years has it been since Jerry World was built? Uh, a lot of these stadiums have caught up and surpassed. I'd say 10 or 15 years. It's not that old. No, it's not old per se, but everything that he did that was state-of-the-art back then, if you look at the SoFis of the world, they've outdone him. Yeah, SoFi is just different. It, it's it's even different than, uh, you know, anything that we've ever seen. But nobody is, you don't see very many stadiums that have that big ass uh, scoreboard in the middle of the field. You know, that's like true. Eight or whatever. I, is it AT and T Stay? I who knows. Yeah, Dallas does play at AT and T <clears throat> Stadium Th this year until somebody else buys naming rights. Yeah, but good for them. Hey, congratulations, Seattle. We still have more Super Bowls than you. Moving on. <laughs> good point. Maybe that's why. Seattle's only had one Super Bowl victory in the last 10 years. So they got number one, and we've got two, so that's why we're number two. Maybe that's what it was. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, if that's what it is, uh, you know, go ahead and take that. <laughs> I won't lose any sleep for them being number one. Yeah, everybody's got to be number one at something, right? Right. All right. Next up, I want to explore this. And okay. if anybody's listening to this show when it comes to football for a while, I can't stand Nick Wright. There's uh, being Nick a Wright homer, is the man. There's being a homer and there's being a homer. And ever since I've ever seen or heard of this guy, the Chiefs can do no wrong. And that's not the case. They haven't won 10 Super Bowls in a row. Come on. You 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 got to let it go. He's predicted a perfect 20 and 0 season for the Chiefs. Now, it's one thing to say, "Hey, they're going to win it all." But 20 and 0? It's a gimmick, Rick. It's not for real. That's not his real prediction. That was a gimmick for the show. Was it now? Yeah, I've actually I actually watch that show religiously every day. Uh, it's a gimmick, and it's no different than Skip Bayless talking about how good the Cowboys are. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, let's you you take it with a grain of salt, Skip. You know, really, Skip. You know, Skip. <laughs> yeah, you take that with a grain of salt. Uh, I, in his heart of hearts, he really does not believe it, but. He does that to get under everybody's skin that's on the show because you have the one dude that is a diehard Patriots fan who's been right needling him this whole past five, six, seven years. So now it's he's returning the favor, basically. And then uh, I want to say the other guy is a, a, is a Jet fan that's on there. He's going to have a few things to smile about this year. But yeah, I. He doesn't make the Chiefs fans look bad. He does it's it's just a gimmick. Don't 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 take the heart. He really doesn't mean 20 and 0. Uh, I'm glad that you know that cuz I Nick Wright was real wrong for that. But well not he, yet he hasn't been wrong. Not yet. Well, you you're not right. Not not yet. I mean, do I think they're going to go 20 and 0? No. At this point, with Travis Kelsey being injured, I don't even know if they're going to win this Thursday. Real quick on that, I just want to let you know, Kelsey did walk off the field on his own power and then came back a little bit later to practice. I don't think he'll be uh, a scratch now, for the game. I where think, did you hear that? Because I didn't see none of that. Um, I heard it on uh, the NFL Network earlier today on the way home on Sirius Satellite Radio Network. Okay. Because everything I'm reading saying is that... He hyperextended not, it. He hyperextended it, and there's a bunch of swelling, and they don't know what it's going to be until after the swelling. And, 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 and full disclosure, that's that's what the uh, co-host of whatever the show was that I was listening to did mention, because he was an ex-player. He's like, yeah, he came back. He probably jogged a little bit, but he was not a full participant in practice, and I guarantee you he's going to be very sore and swollen tomorrow. So you are right about that, my friend. Um, but 
I get two things out of this that go in different directions. Big boy might be all right and might play a little bit, might be a little gingerly on Thursday, or they rest him for a week, which is something that I could see Andy doing this early in the season. I just hope that something that I mentioned a couple shows ago doesn't start to happen already. Remember I said nagging injuries could start to slow Kelsey down? Yeah, I remember you jinxing him. I, I see. <laughs> I didn't. Go officially, ahead. Go ahead. officially, I have not jinxed him yet because. Go ahead that, and pull that Kelsey voodoo doll out your desk. I know you got it right there. He you probably might, got something pinching his knee. He might be all world the rest of this season, not missing anything. So, hey, don't don't get me started. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say Kill this the right now. Get out on that field. Healthy, though. Yeah, don't, healthy. don't do it if you if you can't do 100. I don't want 95%. I want 100%, Travis, because we don't need to to need you in the battle because we got the whole war that we got to win. What are you talking but about? I'm Mahomes, a, Mahomes won games on one leg. That's different. That is different <laughs> because there isn't nobody behind Mahomes that can do what he does. There are people behind Kelsey that can that can give us 50% of what he does. True. Very true. But I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. Like I was after the 2019 season, the 2020 season, in my mindset, the Chiefs can't do any wrong because we're playing with house money. We have nothing to prove. Nothing. We could we could lose every game, and I'm still going to be smiling because we won the Super Bowl last year. Now, that only lasts for this year, for this season. Now, do I think we're going to lose every game? Obviously not. I but get I'm that. not going to get too high. I'm not going to get too low. We are playing with house money. And there are people that I know in my friends group that hate when I say that. But there's no need to live and die over, over every Chiefs game this year. We, we, yes, we have targets on our back. I get that. But we have nothing to prove. We've already proven it. Good point. Good point. Um, I will say this. There's no way the Chiefs are going to lose every single game this year, just like they wouldn't win every single game. So you don't have to worry about that. Right, because we played the Raiders twice. See? See? <laughs> Why you got to be hurtful, man? Why you got to be hurtful? <laughs> Not that I you know you, on the down low, you know what I'm you know where I'm going with my team. I mean, you know. Coach. But um <laughs> and I'll say this about my squad. I said it last week. If they do some good, and if he shows me that he can coach, that's the thing. Because last season he didn't show me that he could coach. He called plays that didn't work. He went to the well too often with what did work and then it didn't work. And, you know, he, he wasn't on the same page as his team. So when do you start blaming the players? You're blaming everything on the coach. All he can do is say, Hey, go run this play. It's up to them to execute. It's a two edged sword. Um, so that game last year against the Patriots, was it your coach's fault that y'all lost? Uh, we didn't lose to the Patriots. Yes, you did. No, Chandler Jones sorry. picked off. I'm uh, sorry. When the Patriots, when y'all beat the Patriots, was that the coach's victory? No, that was Chandler Jones who intercepted a pass and ran it in at, as time expired. Hey, press pause real quick. I have an, I have a phone call here. Okay. Okay. But no, you're right. Uh, the Patriots, you guys were able to beat the Patriots. Um, Let's go to the Colts game, which we did lose. That okay. man was out coached by somebody who literally came up off the streets, coached their first game. Mm -hmm. That was coaching. 100% okay, coaching. One game. Up by 21 against Arizona. That's not, he, he's not playing defense. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But here's the thing. We blew a record number of double-digit leads 
that he's okay. not playing the game. But here's the, the thing. Hold on, uh, hold okay. on. I see where you I see where you're going, and you're right. But that's also on the coach as well because that's personnel and the coach is under him too. But he's not, nor has he ever been a defensive coach. So his offensive mindset got you guys up to double digits leads. Now, did he make some poor hiring decisions when he hired these defensive coaches? Possibly. Is he not a, uh, does he need to get better at maybe um, reprimanding the defensive coaching guys because they let their guys out yeah, to a know. certain extent? But so I'm going to pause this on the Raiders and go back to Coach Prime. Who gets the who gets the credit for that win, Coach Prime mm -hmm. or the players? Coach Prime gets the credit. Why he's he not put the playing. team together? He gets he gets he gets credit for getting them prepared. Mm -hmm. He does not get the credit for them winning the game. He didn't make some great call that the team executed. Because their defense was shitty too. <laughs> well, yeah, you you got you know? forty two laid on you. You just happened to score forty five. So I get that, right? I mean, so they couldn't. Their running game, they couldn't stop a cold. When you know, with with uh, that running game, that TC was going right up the gut the whole game. Nobody's blaming him for that. So I understand, but you with the Raiders are putting too much uh, of the responsibilities for their for them losing to the coach. And I agree with you to a certain extent. It's just that he took a playoff team, and then they only became a six win team. We were supposed to get better. I I, I would have taken say the same. But and yes, first and it's year, not right? all on him. It's not all on him, but it there were some decisions coach, that he right? made his first year as a coach with the Raiders. Yes. Right. And he and made a lot of your, decisions that your, were not. Your, good. You go back to that. Yeah, we were a playoff team. I mean, mathematically, you made it in, but it's not like y'all were a playoff team. Yes, you got into the playoffs. So technically, by the term, playoff team. But Right. But you weren't here's, a contender. You weren't going nowhere. You knew that. I knew that. Everybody knew that. But 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 dig this. Shouldn't you get better the following year? If you're the same coach, yes. But you're a new coaching staff. You know, you got to give them time to do their thing as well. And for that, I kind of blame the owner as well. Why? Why not keep the coaching staff that you had and build why, up? Now, if they were why, to lose the following year like that, then you dismantle the thing. But you don't dismantle the thing when you've got. Okay, so a, why didn't winning... Colorado? Why didn't Colorado keep their coaching staff one more year to see if they could get any better? Because they only won one game, bro. So maybe next year they'll win two. <laughs> I'm, they had an opportunity to go out and get coach prime right yeah somebody to make a splash the raiders organization had the opportunity to go get the dude from new england it's the same scenario it just hasn't didn't work out in the first year i think the raiders will be greatly improved this year i i guess i can only answer your question like this because we are comparing McDaniels to Sanders. Sanders Not really. Seems, well, well this, is, this is just where I'm going with it. Sanders seems more like a leader, which is what a coach should be. McDaniels seems more like it's my way or the highway. And you can't, that doesn't work anymore in the NFL. Why do you think it's a my way or the highway thing? Just from things that I've heard from former players because maybe the old regime let them be lazy and this guy's not letting them be lazy so he's making them be accountable there's nothing wrong with making them be accountable but you gotta accept some input from your players i'm not gonna say he did car no, dirty don't. 
without saying he did car dirty. How, why? Because he decided to go with, with a different player? How'd that work out for him? They lost those last two games. That quarterback isn't even there. They weren't going anywhere to begin with, so it doesn't matter. But if you don't plan on keeping Carr, and I'm not saying he had to keep Carr, play Carr, use him as trade value, and get something for him. Nobody's going to trade for Carr. That's why they cut him. New Orleans actually wanted to call, do a trade. They weren't going to trade for, for, well, for him. At that point, it was fractured. Carr vetoed that trade. And they, that's the reason they, why Carr signed later on with them. They weren't going to get anything but maybe, you know, a Starbucks gift card and a free <laughs> year's worth of gas or some shit like well, that. Well, hey, that's some him. hot coffee and some fuel in your tank. <laughs> right. All I'm saying is give it a little bit of time. And, most and, and, and I agree with you. I'm prepared most to coaching give it some time. Staffs, most coaching staffs, you don't really see what they're going to be till year three this is year number two and i know you don't want to hear it unless unless your your boy you know is up by or down by one with six seconds left and he decides to go for two instead of just kick the field goal or kick the extra point going to overtime then i will listen to bad coaching decisions but coaches can only do so much. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm equated to uh, even my man Andy Reid with all these trick plays that these players come up to him. You know, hey, let's do the snow globe. Let's do corn dog right. Let's do, do we have time for wasp or all that crap that you hear? He has to have faith in those guys to execute. So the first time he put it in, they executed. Oh, it worked. Well, maybe I'll go, I'll listen to him the next time. You know, that's how he can only do what he, you know, if the guy doesn't think that his guys can execute, then he's not going to call those plays. Agreed. I just think, and, don't, and, don't and give I'm him willing so to give him a flat. chance. I'm, I'm willing to give him a chance. I mean, I'm not expecting playoffs this year, so don't think that. But I am expecting a 500 or better record. It would actually have to be better because we're in the 17 game. NFL seasons now. So nine and eight or better. I got them going eight and nine, and we'll go up this a little bit. But any one of these games could change to make that nine and eight or 10 and seven. I mean, I could see that happening too, but we'll discuss that when we go into our deal. Well, you know, while, while we're talking about, it, we have, um, I'm going to go through some of these games on Sunday. And I okay. want you to tell me, I'll give you the point spread and the over under, not the, um, for example, Detroit at Kansas city, that's Thursday mm -hmm. chiefs by six and a half. And the over under is 54. Do you agree with either or both of those? Um, over under, I think that's a pretty good, a pretty, a pretty good hit there. Just because I think it's going to be a track meet on both sides of the field, I think it could be a 45-42 type of ball game, kind of like the Colorado game. Um, you said we're six and a half point favorites. Yeah, uh, I would bet Detroit to cover. Okay. Um, Cincinnati at Cleveland. Cincinnati by one, and the over under is forty seven and a half. I, I don't know enough about either one of those teams. For, this is a trap the, door game, by the way. For Joe the Burrow has only under. won two games against this uh, Cleveland Browns team. No, that's not right. He hasn't. He's only lost two games to them. Double check it. For whatever reason, the Browns have the Bengals number. It doesn't make sense, but they do. I, I think he's they like said that they. I thought he said he was five and one against them. No, not Burrow. They lost twice last year to him, so I know he's not. And it's not a trap door game being number. It's a one. trap door. I mean, it's, it's a trap door game for somebody who's betting the line. I, I would. Who you said they're one point favorites? I yes. would. I would take Cincinnati. I would still take Cincinnati, but 
the over under is where I think the trap is. I don't see 47 and a half points scored in this game. I don't even see Burrow playing. Mm. Let me uh let me grab uh two more here. Oh, here's a good one. San Francisco is a two and a half point favorite to Pittsburgh, and the over under is uh 40, 40. 5. I would take 49ers and I'll probably take the under on that. I would agree with you on that. And, and and then there's Las Vegas at Denver. Denver has not beat the Raiders in quite a while, but Denver is a four point favorite and the over under is 43 and a half. This is tough. um you said Denver's four and a half favorites? Uh four point favorite. They're favored by four. I would probably take Raiders to cover the point, but Broncos are going to win that game. I, I hate to say it, but I got to agree. I got to agree. Oh, that hurts, but I got to agree because of the uh, coaching factor. I do want to go over one more game here that's intriguing to me, and we might have a difference of opinion on it. The Miami okay. Dolphins at the Los Angeles Chargers. And um, it says here that uh, the Chargers by three and the over under is 50.5. I think that that over under is very high. I would take the under on it. And I think Miami's outright going to win the game. So you don't think that either team can score four touchdowns apiece? <laughs> I think they can, but uh, I don't know if both of them can the very first week out. I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, three and outs See, or no, uh, stalled drives. This, So you're saying the defenses are going to be so good in week one that there's going to be a lot of three and outs. Well, I didn't say a lot, but they're 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 going to be some. I mean, I you can't have them score on every single possession. You, yes, you don't have a possibility, to. but you don't have to. If that's the case, the score's gonna be like sixty something to fifty something. But uh normally in week one, offense is head and shoulders above the defenses that they're playing. And if you have two decent offenses, which the Chargers and the Dolphins do, I would definitely probably take the over on this one. If it's only 50 points, I mean, that's one team scoring five touchdowns and the other one scoring three. That could be a 42-21 game. 35-21 game. Hey, we, we shall see. I mean, you could be right. I just have a sneaking suspicion that one, Miami's going to win, not the Chargers. And two, I just don't know if the score will be that high. Did I you forget wrong. who's did you forget who's all on the teams though? Miami <laughs> is a track meet. And you know, just by going last week or last year, let me uh do this real quick. Because uh, I'm just looking. I mean, Miami could drop 50 by themselves. That's what I'm looking at. Now, don't get uh, me wrong. If the over under was 45, 47, somewhere in there, I get it. So when I say 50 is high, I don't mean the over under should be 20 either. Uh, I just think that, you know, 45 to 47 is a good over under for uh, these two clubs. So, like, last year, now granted, their first game is going to make my whole argument go stupid because they beat the Patriots 20-7, to 7, okay? Mm -hmm. 27 total points. That's Bill Belichick. Let's look at the next week. Would you or would you not agree that Baltimore Ravens have a decent defense? I would definitely agree. That's week two. Do you think that 
last year's Baltimore Ravens were loaded on offense. Yes or no? Moderately. The score was 42 to 38. Mm. Okay. That blows my theory out of the water. And then in week three, they won 21 to 19. I mean, so I could see both of these. Where's it at? Miami or, or LA? It is in LA. The Chargers, man, they're just. Herbert is tough. But they're so but Jekyll and Hyde. Not really, though. The Chargers are what they are. I mean, I'm curious. Keep keep talking because I'm gonna I'm gonna jump over here real quick, and I want to. I'm curious to see. And you know what? How many times last year? These Push guys... aside the over under for a second. I feel that Miami's getting the shaft because I don't think that this prognosticator, whoever put this out, gives them any credit. I think Miami is a better team. Than the Chargers. What do you mean the pro say that one more time? You think that they're not they're not giving the Dolphins any credit? Yeah, I mean, they got the Chargers by three. So, you know. They're giving them the home field advantage. That's why. you're right. That's the three right there. But I got I got Miami with the outright win. I really do. There's just something about that team. They're gonna start hot. They might fade at the end of the season but um hell i wouldn't be surprised i don't think they will but i wouldn't be surprised if miami wins that division that's i actually have my i actually have miami winning that division i remember uh, that from last week yeah um or excuse me the week before i mean last. I mean, the Chargers' first five games that they played last year, one, two, three, four, five. First game, they scored 24. Second game, they scored 24. Third game, they scored 38. Uh, second game, they scored 34. Or fourth game, they scored 34. And the fifth game, they scored 30. So I could definitely see them 28. I can definitely see Miami hitting 28. And it'd be, you know... Being a thirty-one to twenty-eight ball game, which will get you your fifty points. That is true, but I, I do see Miami winning that game as well. I have Miami winning. Yeah, so it it, it is going to be interesting. I mean, I'm just glad. Hey, hey, football is back. Here, oh, okay, I, I keep finding ones that I don't agree with, but That's here fine. we are. Dallas at the New York Giants. Dallas is a three and a half point favorite. At New York, oh yeah, easily Dallas really? all the way. Bet, bet, bet your, bet your mortgage on that. You, what makes you think that? Tell me where, where are you, where are you. I'm not saying you're wrong. All, I'm not. I just want to know where your head's at on this. First of all, if we just go history, Cowboys dominate the Giants. Okay, always have. Always would. It's kind of like when the Chiefs play the Chargers, you know it's going to be a three-point game. You just know it. They always historically have played each other close. Historically, the Cowboys have dominated uh, the uh, the Chargers. Is, is it, I mean, uh, the, the Giants, is it at New York, it, you said? It's at New York. And they're only three-and-a-half-point favorites? Mm-hmm. Man, yeah. It, I, I can see Cowboys winning by seven. And and, and and I have Cowboys winning the NFC East. You you meant to say Eagles, right? No. No, no, wow. no, no. Do you realize that there has not been an NFC East winner of a division back to back in the like last twenty years? So historically, I did not know that. historically speaking, the Eagles aren't going to do it. I tell you what, I've redid all my stuff because you know we 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 name our stuff, and this is a show. I'll just go and throw it out there. Here's the Super Bowl: Cowboys versus Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, that's 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 my Super Bowl pick. 
Really? Yes. I, I, and I was going to ask for your Super Bowl pick here in a minute. I mean, so if you want, well, I'll take a minute and uh, think. That I'll tell over. you again. I'll tell you again when we get to it. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. Um. Well, heck, since I'm in here, I got one more because you know Buffalo at the New York Jets. Okay. Uh, Buffalo. By two, the over under is 46 and a half. I would take this one. I would take the under and I would put my money on the Jets to win outright. Wow. Well, we are clearly in two different directions on here. I would actually take the over on this one. So you you think so here again, you think both teams are gonna score twenty eight points? I do. I think Rogers it'll be is a, gonna light it'll it be up. a it'll be a twenty four to seventeen, twenty eight to twenty ish, you know, something like that. That's still over that's still the over. I mean, no, it, I'm saying the over might get you, but you got Buffalo with a two point favorite. I got I got the Jets winning it. You know, period. I'd pick the Jets to win. Yeah, you said the Jets to win and the under. No, I mean, I, I didn't. I would say the under probably just because I'm more like 24 17 okay. in my mind. Uh, I, both, both teams have phenomenal defenses. Now, uh, Von Miller is not going to be playing because he's on the pup list for the first four weeks of the season. So you take their premier pass rusher out of the game. Uh, but the the Jets, man, they are loaded on the defense. And so I think they're going to do just enough. Plus, each of these two teams know each other. Okay. Now, I Without can't, the I can't disagree of with you. Aaron Rodgers. I just thought of something. The Jets gave them fits both times last year, and that was with a scrub at quarterback. Right, but like I said, they know each other well because mm -hmm. they play each other twice a year. So as for, you know, normally those games are lower scoring, more physical. Plus, this is Monday night. This is the uh, uh, coming out party for the Jets and Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. I suspect that Buffalo would jump on them early, but Aaron will put will take put them in the clinic. In my personal opinion, and I, I think you know Buffalo's at two. I would take Jets, and you know they win by field goal, and you're in the money. Okay, you convinced me. I'm going the other way. I still take the over because I think it's going to be a lot of points scored in this game, but I think the Jets are going to win this game. And I want to go and and since I convinced you to 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 change your pick on that one, I need you to make a case of why you think that it's going to be a high scoring football game. I went back to what you said earlier when we were talking Chargers, how the defenses aren't quite as uh, far along at the beginning of the seasons as the offenses are. Okay. I mean, and I, can, and I also I'll went back argument. to the two games last year where the Jets were gave Buffalo more than they could handle, and I can't see an Aaron Rodgers led Jets team doing worse than the Jets did last year against Buffalo. I think that they are all going to come ready to play, both sides, but I think that uh, this time around. Well, actually, I think the Jets won one of those games last year. So, I mean, that that's even more uh, so to shovel it on. Yeah, when they when it, when they were home last year, they beat Buffalo twenty to seventeen. That's not going to cover your spread. I mean, you're over under. And but what week was game, that? See, so because we're going back to your theory about early week that in was. Football. That one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, week nine. Yeah. But here's the difference. So they mm -hmm. are th where that, where that mindset 
doesn't necessarily compute to this game is the fact that these are division rivals. Yeah. Miami and the Chargers only play once every three years against each other unless they hit the playoffs. So they don't Ruth. see each other. So there's going to be a lot of things that they can do that they're not going to know. The Jets are going to know the defensive packages and the offensive packages and vice versa because they see them. Now, there's going to be little nuances and changes every year. But, you know, last year, 20 to 17 in the first game, Jets won. Second game, Buffalo won 20 to 12. So both victors did not score more than 20 points. Okay. Mm. You make it, you make a convincing argument. You really do. If I had any money at all, I would be one of those guys who would tell you where to where to bet. But then, you know, when you make one bad pick and then people want to kill you. So that's why I don't <laughs> do it. All right. Um, I'm using this but, as a segue real quick. Uh, but normally because... I'm money at the beginning of the season. I am going to follow two more quarterbacks this this year, and okay. uh, it is not Carr or Jackson this year. I'm I'm keeping my personal feelings out of it. I am following from Buffalo. I I, I want to see what Josh Allen can do this year, and from uh, Cincinnati, I want to see what Joe Burrow can do this year. Joe Burrow's got to the Super Bowl. He's proven himself able to get there but i want to see if he can maintain that uh we'll call it upper echelon eliteness whatever you want to put on it uh as a qb josh allen on the other hand i have not seen that from him there are glimpses but i don't think that um he's on that level yet and i was kind of tired of seeing people trying to put him on Mahomes' level last year. Yeah, they had that great game two years ago about during the playoffs. That was a great game. A great game. But I need to see Josh Allen be more consistent. So I'm following these two quarterbacks for different reasons. I want to see if Burrow can maintain what he's building. And I want to see Josh Allen step up to that level which I have strong doubts that he can do at this point. So I'm going to be watching both of them closely. So if you guys watch this show every weekend, I might uh, throw out their stat line every week. Might even have a little so, chart with ups and downs on it. So we'll see. So it's not a competition with them, but I just want to follow them particular. Neither one of those quarterbacks that you mentioned has anything to prove statistically or winning wise both teams both josh i would say i would agree with you on burrow but i would disagree with you on josh allen he does have something to prove because he's got to make it to that next level he he will see he's three years removed from the afc championship game mm -hmm. that the Kansas city beat them now granted nobody and i mean nobody is on the same level as Patrick Mahomes. There is not another quarterback that can carry his jock at the moment. Five years as a starter, five straight AFC Championship games, three Super Bowl appearances, two Super Bowl victories, and two see, MVPs. That, that's why I said I didn't want to compare to uh, no, Mahomes. No. No, I'm just saying. So we're crossing. So I don't want. I don't want to hear any of that from anybody. You know, well, Mahomes is as good as you know. Burrow's as home as no. Now, does Burrow have a better record head to head against Mahomes? Yes, he is three and one. Okay, I'm pretty sure Josh Allen is three and three. Uh, I think so. You're right. So Josh Allen has also beaten Mahomes. Now they were regular season victories. Mm -hmm. They weren't playoff victories because we beat them in the division game. Uh, what was that? Uh, 2021 mm -hmm. beat him in the AFC championship game in 2020. Mm -hmm. You know, the great thing is that Joe Burrow and Josh Allen had to play each other last year, so we didn't have to play them both this year. Uh, you know, this past uh AFC right. playoff. Um, but also, I'm gonna give Josh a slight pass because the, the whole Damar Hamlin at the end of the year thing 
that was a emotional deflator. So, and the fact that they couldn't finish that game and they had no shot at winning the number one seed, that whole thing, you know, that, that was a, de I'm going to give both of those. I'm going to give Josh a wash on that. I don't, I, I don't think that either team has anything to prove Josh. Yes. Maybe a little bit as a player, but I mean, what else can he do? I mean, he doesn't play defense. So to stop Joe Burrow, I mean, again, this goes back to the coaching conversation we had earlier. Well, remember, I'm, I'm, I don't I'm understand. Not, uh, I'm not I putting them head to head. I'm not putting them head to head. I just want to follow each of them to see uh, how they the progress. What's the point of not putting them head to head? What's the point of following them? Because I want to see if Burrow can maintain what he's doing in Cincinnati, and I want to see if Josh Allen can make that leap to where Burrow is. Why do you think that they're not going to maintain it? I, I, I'm not saying they're not. I'm not saying they are. Then I want to see. I'm, I'm I mean, totally what else neutral. Do you need to see, though, is what I'm saying. You, they've already showed you that they are that. Like, there's nothing else to show you. They just need to go out and win the Super Bowl. Yeah. In my mind. You know what I'm saying? So, and I guess I'm going back to the last year. We were talking about, okay, guys that are not even on the cusp. They were middle of the road. Those quarterbacks. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Lamar and Carr. You know, I'm keeping Carr on my watch list this year, but the other quarterback I'm watching is the guy that replaced him, Garoppolo. Those I'm going to compare. And, and I'm going to I'm going like to compare your, those two. And, and for obvious reasons, I did not pick those two because Homer, and you know, and and I feel like I feel like we, and when I say we, I'm talking about Raider fan. I feel like we let the better quarterback go. I still feel that way. So I appreciate you looking at that and, and watching those two from that standpoint, because that could prove me wrong at the end of the year. But well, the only reason why I'm watching them is because they're the same guy. Well, one of them's got a stronger arm, but yeah. Depends on what day it is. And one of them gets injured frequently. Again, depends what day it is. You could interchange them. You could close your eyes. And they're the same type of player. I'm interested in leadership, how far they're going to take their team, so forth and, and so on. Uh, to me, Allen and Burrow, they, I don't need to watch them because I know what they are. They're top five quarterbacks in the league. And going back to what you said, I don't need to see Josh Allen get to a Super Bowl. I wouldn't mind if he had a couple of fourth quarter comebacks this year, just two. And even if he made it to the AFC Championship game again and Kansas City waxed him, if if he does that, you know, I I can see that. Hey, he's still a good quarterback. Okay, we're we're good. Josh Allen should still be there for the next couple of years. If he has more interceptions this year than touchdowns and it just seems to be going downhill, then some flags come up. True, but you haven't seen any flags come up since he came in the league. You're right, I haven't, but this is just my personal pet project for this no, season. No, I got you. Just two you, random you, quarterbacks. You want to waste your time on two of the top five quarterbacks of the league to see if they're any good? By all means, go right ahead. I'm going to well, watch I some don't, actual I don't competitions watch. versus well, some from, from actual quarterbacks. I don't want to watch that, any scrubs either. You know, it, it, I am. Carr and Garoppolo. I wouldn't call them scrubs. I mean, wouldn't call as them much, elite quarterbacks either. As much dirt as I put on Garoppolo, <clears throat> the man has won everywhere he's gone. So I get that. He, he right. does he's need to get to the many mountain. Super, he's Not won as Super many Bowls. Super Bowls as I'm, Burrow, and he's been to the Super Bowl as many times as Joe Burrow. So they're the same quarterback. If you're going to say they're the same quarterback, then you can't really call him a scrub. Because well, you said Burrow is not. But that's I mean, but right. So that's my point going back to saying that is we all know Burrow is one of the top three to five quarterbacks, probably number two on anybody's list. You can maybe name one other guy that could be above him, maybe one A, which might be, might be uh Hurts for the Eagles. Might be. He only has one good year. 
And see, but, that's another one that would be good to watch because I'd like to see his progression. Season in, season out, Josh Allen, you know what you're going to get when he plays. You know what kind of quarterback he is. If you're the opposing defense, you know you have to be on top of your game to be able to stop him. Same with Burrow. You know that going in. You can't say that. There's nobody going into a New Orleans game saying, hey, we got to stop Carr. There's nobody going into a Raiders game saying, hey, we got to stop Garoppolo. You know what I mean? So that's what I mean by when I say those guys, I don't need to follow them because I know what they are. What I, you know, is it worth seeing if they're going to, you know, make it to the next level? For me as a Chiefs fan, no, because I already have the number one quarterback. I don't want them going any further. Well, of course you don't want them because you are a Chiefs fan. But, right. you know, take your fandom out of the equation and just watch them just to see. I don't need to. We're going to see them plenty. We, I've been watching them the last five years. Mm. When they play Kansas City at, at no. a lot. Or you've They've... watched both of them in every game they played last year. No, no, no. no. In the last five years, who are the three quarterbacks always comparing against each other? Mahomes, Burrow, Allen. You see it all year, every year since those three guys have been in the league on every news outlet, on every I, NFL and TV show. That's where my argument wins. I don't think they compare with Mahomes. No, that's no, no. what I'm saying. They, they don't no, compare no. to Mahomes. I want to see how they do aside from that, though. And, and I, I just want to see if you what took, people are seeing that make them say that they are on that level because they are not on that level. And they I'm not are, even a Chiefs fan. They are on that level, just not – they haven't won what Mahomes has done. But statistically, uh, 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 a physical gifted, uh, talent, Oh, there's arm no strength, question that Josh mobility, Allen – That's a big mobile guy. They're all on the same guy. level. They're all on that same level. If you were a GM – drafting a quarterback you can't go wrong with either one of those quarterbacks well that's true you can't right so what so I'm, I'm not saying, saying is, i'm not saying that they are scrubs and i want to see what they do to get better i'm not saying that no you're trying no what i'm hearing is you're saying i want to see what kind of quarterbacks they are are they going to continue to be good that they have nothing no reason to show you that they're not going to be good I, I'm not saying they have any reason to show me that, but I do want to see what they're all about. I myself, I have not watched them game in and game out me for these neither, last few years. You don't so have to, but do you watch NFL Network? Do you watch NFL Live before this before the game starts? But, start? bro, I'm curious. Do you me, watch myself, Undisputed? Take do you all watch the any stats, of those shows? Take all the stats out of it. Me as a person. Just Richard Kearney. No, I, I am that. curious to watch them all 17 weeks just to see what everybody else sees because I have not seen that. Not because I've watched it and haven't seen it. I haven't watched any of their games. That's where so I'm coming with it. You're going to watch all both of their games every week? Well, I'm, I might get highlights, but I haven't watched highlights of either one of them the whole season all the way through ever. And I am curious to see what people see out of them. I know that they are elite, but I want to see it for myself. I want to see where they're at. I don't want to just say, oh, this guy can't do that or this guy can do this. I want to be able you to just, go and do it and know what I'm talking you just said, about. You just said you know that they're elite. Because of the stats, yeah. I can look at stats, but I, I want to see them play. I want to see what these fans see. The last time I watched um, Josh Allen, for example, was that Chiefs game in the playoffs. Not last year, but the, uh, the one where the Chiefs marched down, I guess the year before, in overtime and won the game. That mm -hmm. is the only time I've ever watched Josh Allen play. So you didn't watch Monday or the opening game last year when they played at the Rams and Molly whopped them on national television? No, I did not watch that game. 
Yes, you did. We talked about it. You did too watch the game. I saw highlights. I did not watch the game. I'm telling you, the only time I've seen Josh Allen play from start to finish in a whole game was that game. They haven't played the Raiders? Uh, Not that I'm aware of. If they did, it would have been an out-of-network game that I could not watch. Remember, I live in the Kansas City area, so I am not privy to every Raiders game. One well, of these are mine, but I was just asking. Normally... Fans, they find a way to watch the game. I got you. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that you shouldn't watch them. I'm just saying I think it's a, it's a, it's a moot point. You know what I mean? And you already know. Point. You know but, that they're they're top tier quarterbacks. So really, what are you wanting to watch? Are they going to get any better? No, I, it me, is what it is. me watching them's not going to make them any better. No, no. But I, no, I, no, just, I know that. No, I mean, just what a are curiosity you really fact wanting to see? But it's, I got you. No, it's just a curiosity. We wasted factor. way too much time on those two guys. Well, that's true. We, and probably at the end of the year, I'll be saying that too. But <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to be able to say that uh, instead of saying I could have or I should have watched this, I should have watched that. I'm I mean, with you. I'm, I'm gonna. I digress. I might get to week three and be like, "Yeah, you were right. I'm done." You never know. But it, no, I think it's worth player. watching. I just like for me, the reason why I picked Car and Garoppolo is because I want to actually see if they can do what they've been doing on their old teams with their new teams. And, you know? and, and, and allow me to tell you that you're going to see what I see because I've watched Car play. Car is a really good quarterback who doesn't get credit. There's one thing that Car did not have ever in his playing days in Oakland or Las Vegas. And that was a defense. And Garoppolo, you're going to see the W's fade and the L's increase because they still don't have a good defense in Vegas. That doesn't make either one of them better than the other, per se, but record-wise, you'll see why Carr gets so much flack from all those years in the AFC West with superior teams. If he had any kind of defense any year that he was there during that decade, it would be so much better. Even the year that they went to the playoffs and he broke his leg, the defense was just so-so. So I think with that Saints defense, that will help him. I mean, even if that man only wins 10 games, that's an improvement from where he was at. I don't even know a player on the Saints defense, so I'll take your word for it. I know that that defense was ranked better than 30th, so I'll, you know, trust me. And and that'll be interesting to see how you, uh, how you view both of those quarterbacks over the course of the year. And I know I do give Garoppolo a lot of dirt, but that's because I just feel like at, at Worst, that was an even up switch, and that's all it was. All right, segueing though to our, our last thing here, I want your Super Bowl pick. I thought you were joking a few minutes ago, so this is your time, big show, to tell me who your Super Bowl pick really is. Make sure, let me let me clean out my ear, make sure that I heard that right. Drum roll. Uh, Give me your Super Bowl uh, pick. Uh, Dallas Cowboys versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City winning. Mm, 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 mm. Well, you're half right. You're half right. I've got the Philadelphia Eagles still and the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City being the first back-to-back -back team since the, was it 2003, 2013, somewhere in that New England Patriots. 2013 New England Patriots. First team to go back-to-back -back since then. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a possibility. I just, the... The, the Cowboys really have a favorable schedule. Um, 
And like I said, there's not been a team to repeat in the NFC East in the last two decades. So the Eagles, I don't foresee them. I I, I think the Eagles will take a step back. Most most Super Bowl losing teams do. That is true. Um, so, you know, that's part of my deal. The Cowboys are locked and loaded. Um, you know, and it's going to be fairly easy for them to make the playoffs. You know, my seven, my seven uh, people in the playoffs are Cowboys, Lions, Eagles, Niners, Saints, Giants, Bears. I mean, I didn't, or not Bears, Bucks. Um, I, I, I don't necessarily have them in a particular uh, seating order. Um, and the AFC, I got KC, Miami, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, Las Vegas, uh, Buffalo, and the Jets. Wow! Show in the AFC. Wow! Being wow, in the wow. in the playoffs, but I see Cowboys and the Chiefs, and the Chiefs winning it. I got Kansas City at fourteen and three. I got the Chargers at ten and seven, and I got uh, L.A. and uh, no, I got the Raiders at ten and seven, the Chargers at eight and nine, and the Broncos also at eight and nine. Am I in the twilight zone? You're giving my squad a lot of love. I think with um I, I think Garoppolo knowing the New England offense, that's going to be a big difference maker on how they are effectively playing on offense. And but believe Brandon, me, they still I hope that you they, are right. I so hope that you are right about this. I mean, I think they're gonna they're gonna slide in, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh seed. You know, they're not gonna have a playoff game. Hey, even at home. if they're one and done, but even if they're one uh, and done, I'll, I'll you know, I'll dance a jig on the show, man. I think they'll make the dance. I think they'll make the. I think they'll get invited to the party. Um, they're just gonna be going home early. Hey, I'd rather be invited than to be on the outside looking in. So, um, I'll take that, man. I, I wish it were true. I, I really do. Uh, the only differences I have over any of that, I, I've got, like I said, the Eagles over the boys. And I actually have the Chargers in there instead of the Raiders. I, I, th I think the Chargers take a step back this year. I think Denver takes a step up. I think. The Raiders take a step up, you know, and I think that the Chargers take a step back. Man, if you are right, you're going to Vegas with me this summer, and uh, we are placing some money on some stuff. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> I don't gamble, my friend. All you got to do is tell me what to gamble on then. <laughs> I just did. There you go. Put your money on that right there. Oh, all right, folks. Hey, make sure that if you're watching on YouTube, you have a hit the like button, uh, share the love with everybody else. Let them know about the slightly work podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or you just want to say hi, you can hit us up. We uh, do have email, uh, email us at the slightly work podcast at yahoo.com. We are on all your favorite podcast feeds, Apple, is now coming soon. Yay. Finally, the last piece of the puzzle. Everybody else, we're in there. All right. Big show. Take us on out of here. Real quickly, just another quick shout out. Just again, uh, like I said at the very beginning, I had the opportunity to meet my biological family. So shout out to Charlie, Vicky, Christy, Shelly, and Kelly. Love you guys. We will see you next time. Tell everybody else that you love them. And, uh, you know, remember, tomorrow's not promise. And uh, go Chiefs. Wow, that was powerful, except for that last part. Go Rangers. <laughs> See you guys next week. Hey, before we go, make sure y'all watch Ahsoka. Damn good episode three. I'm getting to go watch episode four now. Show? Episode three sucked. We'll talk about it next week.
<laughs> Later.